All right, organizational roles. These are the ones that are based upon the power of your position within the organization. And there's at least five of them that we want to talk about here today. The first organizational role is that of an obstacle remover. And by that I mean as a good leader, as a good supervisor, because you have the supervision, because you can see things that your officers and your, that your subordinates can't see because they're going around with these blinders on, you've got the supervision goggles. You see things that would get in the way. An obstacle could be lack of training. It could be lack of skills. It could be a lack of funding. It could be lack of equipment. It could be a, a lack of effective delegation of authority. These are things that you, it could be political concerns, and it, and it could be environmental factors that are out there that are limiting the ability of your people to accomplish the goals of the organization, to accomplish those predetermined goals that you're trying to accomplish through others, through them. So your job as a supervisor is to put the supervision goggles on, see the obstacles that might get in the way, and remove the obstacles. You're supposed to be paving the way. You're supposed to be cutting through all the red tape. You're supposed to be um, you know, paving the road so they can travel smoothly to get from where they are today to where they want to be in the future and accomplish the goals of the organization. So here's a question I always like to ask supervisors when I'm doing this training. Are you an obstacle remover? Or are you an obstacle? You know, sometimes our supervisors and our leaders can be the greatest obstacles. We ourselves are the ones that are hindering our officers and our people from moving forward, accomplishing the goals, and becoming all that they can be. So I encourage you to be the obstacle remover. Secondly, is to be the resource officer. In other words, you might not have all the answers, you might not have all the resources available that, that your officers, that your deputies need to get the job done, but you better doggone be sure that you know where to go to get them. You've got to be the one that knows what the resources are within the organization or even outside in the community and bring those resources to bear on the problem and giving your officers, your men, your people, your subordinates, the tools, the equipment, the training, the authority that they need to get the job done. So number two, resource officer. Number three, problem solver. And again, we've got to have the supervision goggles on. You've got to see things that they can't see. you got to go below the surface because a lot of times we deal with symptoms and we don't deal with problems. But we're supposed to be the problem solvers. It'd be, it'd be sort of like me going to a doctor and saying, uh, you know, Doc, I got this, uh, I got this terrible headache. I, I can't stand the pain. I can't sleep at night. I need some relief. And the doctor says, uh, sure, we'll take these, uh, take these painkillers. And, and you'll feel a lot better. Now, is the doctor in that case treating the problem or is he or she treating the symptom of the problem? You see, the headache is just a symptom. The problem could be something much deeper. The problem could be, you know, I, I, it could be cancer. It, it could be some type of uh, problem with the, my uh, vascular system that's going on there, creating this headache. And if they fail to treat the problem, to identify and diagnose the problem, I might feel better for a time taking the painkillers, but I'm still gonna die. And so that's why we have to be the problem solvers. And we'll find out that many, 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 most of the problems that we deal with within our organizations come from a lack of character, either on behalf of ourselves, our leadership, or those that are under us. So again, seeing beyond, beyond uh, the behavior and seeing into the heart of character that motivates that behavior, that's one of your organizational roles as an effective supervisor. Uh, number uh, four is the change agent. You know, by definition, we're trying to move in an organization forward. We're trying to accomplish those predetermined objectives. And that involves change. And people can be very resistant to change at times. We'll talk about that in the dynamic of change in more detail. But you've got to be the change agent. You've got to be the instigator of change. You've got to be the one that, that forces that change to happen, that, that creates an environment that creates an environment where people want to change. That's again, being able to see things that others can't see, the big picture, and focus on those issues so that we create an environment where people want to change. They, 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 they capture the vision of the organization and, and, they, and they come along following you as a leader toward accomplishing those goals. And number five is risk taker. Now, leading effectively means taking risks. Now, I'm not talking about physical risks necessarily. I'm not talking about uh, you know, sending your officers out there without their ballistic vest on or not wearing your seatbelt in your car. Not, not those types of risks, but risks within relationships. And one of the greatest risks that I'm going to ask you to take as a leader, as a supervisor in your organization is the risk of allowing your officers to make unintentional mistakes.
Now, that's a tough one for us to swallow because we don't like people making mistakes. But a lot of times, our officers, our deputies, will make unintentional mistakes. And in those cases, we don't want to we don't want to beat them up too badly if it was unintentional. Now, I'm not talking about malicious mistakes. I'm not talking about where there was some type of an evil intent that they were trying to do something deliberately wrong. In those cases, we're going to have to deal with that differently. Uh, we're, we're going to do a whole dynamic on discipline and how you would uh, uh, administer discipline effectively within your organizational structure. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where their, their heart was good. You know their intentions were good. They were trying to do the right thing. Their heart was in the right place. But for whatever reason, they were inexperienced, they were immature, they didn't achieve that uh, level of competency yet, they had those blinders on, they didn't see the obstacle, the problem that got in the way that caused the mistake to occur. And in those cases, we want to more gently restore them. Because this is what you gotta think about. You know, how many of you, at some point in your career, have been beaten up, you know, figuratively, disciplined, punished, because of a well-intentioned mistake. Your, your intentions were good, they were sound, but for whatever reason, the thing backfired on you and it didn't go the way you had thought, and you got disciplined for it. How many of you have had that experience? Most people have, I know I have. And then you ask yourself, well, what did that do to your motivation, to your enthusiasm, to your initiative, when you got punished for making a well-intentioned mistake? And, of course, the answer is it goes right into the tank. I mean, uh, your initiative falls, problem-solving skills fall, the, the enthusiasm, the morale falls within the organization. So I want to encourage you to give your officers the freedom to make well-intentioned mistakes, restore them gently so that they can correct the mistake. We can't tolerate the mistake on a continual basis, but, uh, but not to dampen their motivation and not to crush their spirit as they go forward because we want them to be motivated problem solvers out there in the field getting the job done and not just punching the time clock and not just filling out their time sheet and collecting their paycheck and going home. So, and, and then you have to ask yourself this question. I just asked you how many of you have been beaten up by a supervisor for making a well-intentioned mistake. Now ask yourself this question. How many of you have been the supervisor? You know, how many of us have beaten our officers up figuratively for well-intentioned mistakes because that's the way we were treated? And we remember how it was when we made a well-intentioned mistake, and we're going to treat our people the exact same way that we were treated. And it, and it goes generation after generation after generation and it just uh, in this vicious cycle of punishing people for well-intentioned mistakes. And we're going to see morale go down the tubes, and we know that morale and performance are intricately linked, and we've got to be extraordinarily concerned as leaders about the morale of our officers and our organization. So we have five organizational roles, obstacle remover, resource officer, problem solver, change agent, and risk taker.